This is my paper on the existential and emotional impact of Brexit. We find ourselves in a very strange situation, for each day brings us new information about the devastation that leaving the EU is going to visit upon us from April 2019. This is no longer a game, this is reality, this is going to happen. We are going to cut off from our trusted partners. A mad thing to do. Our descent in the global world has already begun and it prefigures the enormity of what is going to happen. It's unthinkable. Many of us are acutely aware of the Orwellian nature of the world we now inhabit. It's just weird. Our leaders appear to live in a daze of self-deception and denial. They exhibit a strange determination to continue burning bridges that we have spent decades constructing, decades painstakingly constructing. These bridges are essential to our connectivity and to our very survival. Sometimes it almost seems as if we are on trial, as if a social experiment is being rolled out to test our personal resilience and our personal sanity to see whether we are those few people that stand up to mad demands upon us and that say, no, this is madness, this is wrong, this is ethically objectionable. But of course we all respond differently in situations like this. Some are carrying on with their lives as if nothing has happened and as if everything is normal no matter what we will do in a year's time. Some of us are still in shock and can't quite believe that this is happening at all. But some of us are tearing our hair out in despair. It all seems so counterintuitive, doesn't it? And so nonsensical. It's just as if a shadow of madness has crept over our nation. We feel weary of all the fighting, all the conflict, we feel disorientated and uncertain of our future. Very few of us are exempt from these reactions. In one way or another, the spectre of Brexit is affecting us. And feelings are running high, I can tell you, because I did a survey of 1,300 UK citizens together with Dr. Helen de Cruz. And these people had voted to remain in the EU and their responses show very clearly how they have been feeling since the referendum, ever since, for two years. Theirs are strong and deep emotions. They feel devastated, angry, depressed, betrayed, ashamed, nearly two years on. This is intense and intimate stuff. This is not some superficial, political thing. What has happened to them feels personal. They feel their own lives have been completely changed by what has happened. They feel the climate in the nation has changed. The vote has struck at the core of their identity. The very things that they value have been touched by it. And all this continues to dominate their everyday experience, every day. They are not about to let go of these feelings. These feelings get more and more intense as we get closer to this crazy moment where we deny our togetherness with our partners. People also feel disenfranchised. Well, 17 million voted to exit the EU. There were actually 16 million people, almost as many, who voted to remain in the EU. And many who voted leave, of course, have now realised 
the foolishness of that choice. They were protesting and now the reality is here and they realize they made a mistake. We need to also keep remembering that in addition to the 16 million who voted to stay, there were at least 5 million potential voters who were disenfranchised completely from the vote. Unjustly so, because they would have been very likely to vote remain. These were the 3.5 million EU citizens who are settled in the UK, and all the UK citizens who have been resident abroad for more than 15 years. All of these have been treated abominably like second-class citizens who could not express their wishes on the very thing that is touching them more than anyone else. How absurd is that? And people are still saying we need to respect the democratic vote. Well, that would be great if it had been democratic, but it was far from democratic, obviously. Many of these five million people who were disenfranchised feel very strongly about it. Their personal circumstances are deeply, directly touched by it. And they were excluded. No, that doesn't sit well with democracy. It is quite clear that people have been victimized by this vote, and that's scandalous. So many have campaigned, but they haven't been listened to. They're still unheard, they still feel forsaken. It is as if their protest and arguments hardly matter at all. People just brush it off and keep pushing forward with this mad project. As a psychotherapist, I've worked with many people who are in similar positions for different reasons. And some of them are truly devastated because they have nowhere to turn now. Not everyone can obtain settled status. And many people have no home or family in their country of origin. They have ad adopted Britain. This is where their home has been made. They are really British to all intents and purposes. They should have been offered the sanctuary of dual nationality straight away, with a shortcut to it if their whole lives were going to be revolutionized. Of course, they feel they have lost not only their identity and their safety, they've lost their human rights. They've lost their sense of being respected of being okay in their lives. This is deeply reaching. It is totally unacceptable that we should create this situation for five million people and call it democracy. It's a kind of mild form of ethnic cleansing for goodness sake, with a million people wanting to leave the UK where they had put down their roots. No. It's not okay. It's not democracy. Don't use that terminology for keeping pushing forward this mad project. It's outrageous. We know that hundreds of thousands have already left and many more are planning to do so after Brexit. Some are tied to the country by marriage or professionally. And a significant number of them are so deeply upset that they are not coping and have broken down. We're doing this to them for no good reason. But of course, soon the same thing will happen to UK citizens when they lose their free movement, their EU citizenship and their entire lives will change. People are not thinking ahead about that yet. We set up a clinic for European citizens who can't cope. It's called ESSE which stands for European Emotional Support Service. ESSE is a free service via phone and online and is run by volunteering registered professional existential psychotherapists. has no funding when, of course, this kind of service should have been funded straight away by a government putting the lives of these people in the balance. 
One thing I've learned from working with the clinic is how great the need for people is to connect to others in a similar situation. I notice people who withdraw in general and who stop talking to others about their situation find themselves getting worse very quickly. And when they re-engage and realize that they're taken seriously and they can do something about their plight, things improve immediately. So working with pro-European groups has been particularly beneficial for EU citizens who felt upset. They have helped a lot in publicizing the situation. Being sucked into a vortex of gloom and doom is not good for any of us, and it is crucial for our resistance to remain positive, constructive and purposeful, and more and more people should join it. Getting a hold of reliable information has been another healing factor for many people who are hit by the referendum. The initial stages of the Brexit tragedy were surrounded with so much misinformation and so much sheer denial of reality. It was very confusing. The more accurate information we were able to gather and the more we felt supported by a network of reliable resources and then things get better. Many experts have issued warnings and keep pointing out all the dangers we're courting and all the potential torments we're going to suffer and somehow the British population is taking it in its stride. Instead of being appalled and protesting and being out in the streets in their numbers, they're just swallowing it, one thing after another, as we're losing organisations, as people leave us, as we're being regarded as upsetting and uncooperative by other nations. We just carry on stoically. What is happening to this nation? Hundreds of thousands of people were indeed mobilised at many events that have happened. Marches and rallies. But the media have not made much of it at all. The BBC have been incredibly casual about these things and very often absent in reporting about these protests. We have long known that the gutter press, of course, is in favour of leaving and supports this very small group of rich people that will benefit from Brexit. Smaller and smaller group, really, that will benefit. The very large majority of us will be far worse off. But the gutter press, read by so many people who are going to be in poverty afterwards, are still peddling lies and still misrepresenting the distressing situation that we find ourselves in. Thank goodness for the broadsheets who have been staunch, like the Guardian, the Observer and the Independent, and of course our valiant New European that has actually become the voice of everybody who is concerned about what is happening. They are aware of how vulnerable people have been targeted by the gutter press and how many mendacious messages about Europe have been spread. We have a pretty good idea that Cambridge Analytica and other organisations that use psychographic methods have very cynically targeted people who were vulnerable and made them believe the wrong things so that they thought that voting for Brexit would make their situation better when the very opposite is true. How scandalous is that? How can we have let this happen? How come there isn't an investigation of this now? We know that the financial limits were also exceeded by campaign leave and the Electoral Commission has made this clear, but again, persecution is minimal. Social media, of course, were a part of all this and have created this event in some way. But the other side of that coin 
is that without the social media, the resistance movement could never have gathered in the way that it has. Many online groups have thrived and Twitter is a very active place to fight back. So we have discovered our natural allies online so easily. We have become conversant with the impact studies that were not shown to us. We have found out information that was hidden. And so there is one silver lining to the dark clouds of Brexit, and it is this solidarity and loyalty that the Remain movement has built. The FBPE groups have gathered strength, and we know that the majority of people in Britain are now lined up together, just waiting for the moment to turn things around. There is for the first time a true understanding in those groups of what Europe stands for and an enthusiasm for the peace and collaboration that is Europe and that people have so misunderstood because they have been so misinformed for so long. But many of us are still finding it hard to understand the magnitude of the project this country is embarking on, let alone have sufficient knowledge to really argue from what is factual and what is true. So many people still repeating the lies and the misunderstanding, the misinformation that was spread around to them. It's very sad. And sometimes it leads to a lot of anger. People don't realize how their economy is going to be shut down, how they're going to lose their NHS, how their trade and industry is in danger at such a level that has never previously seen in any nation before. This is self-harm on a grand scale. Our professions, our agriculture, our fishery, our aviation, our nuclear industry, so many aspects of society, healthcare, of course, in the foreground with all that. No area is exempt. We are all at risk. Our pensions are going to diminish. We are going to lose employment all over the place. It is a disaster. It is a debacle. It is unbelievable that people in control of this country are just carrying on talking about it and aren't stopping the process. Of course Article 50 was evoked much too soon when we had no idea what to expect or what was going to happen. Article 50 needs to be revoked as soon as possible to stop all the confusion. People cannot trust those we have elected to safeguard us any longer. Our MPs have been casual. They have gone along with it all for far too long. Good to see the House of Lords standing up. But many people have lost trust in the political process. We are bereft of seeing a proper opposition, an opposition that stands against this disaster and that speaks truth about it instead of hiding. There are just echoes we hear about what is deeply wrong. Even though it's plain to see that it was demagoguery that won this vote, democracy is still used to hide behind. Well, with real democracy, there should be now a people's vote to ask the people how they feel about the facts that are now lying in front of them on the table and what they want to do to save their country. We must ask the people again and we must stop having all these crazy red lines that our minority government keeps hiding behind. We need a strategy to get out of this impasse. We need to tackle all these huge challenges, all these dangers ahead of us.
nobody seems to be on top of it. Nobody is giving us that leadership that we require. Major issues are continuing to be neglected or ignored or made light of. We hardly ever hear about big things like what's going to happen to Gibraltar or the Falklands. They will be hugely affected by Brexit. The Northern Ireland issues are whitewashed and not taken anywhere near seriously enough. The EU citizens plights, the EU 27, that was never resolved, although we were told it was. Settled status, no. Why should we accept to become second-class citizens without any of our previous rights? It's unacceptable. We have lost faith in our adoptive homeland. We want to be taken seriously. It needs to be acknowledged that we're equal to British citizens. Don't treat us as if you can just make decisions over our heads. So, what are we going to do? Create an underclass of people in this country? That is not what Britain is about. What are we going to do about the financial impact of Brexit when the analyses are all hugely alarming and nobody has really gotten to the bottom of it? All of this is highly irresponsible. We should start to be far more alarmed than we are. People have lost a sense of history, of geography, of long-term perspective and of the future. They have lost a sense of the values of this country. They seem obsessed with a single-minded pursuit of a grand project of Britain's independence. They appear to neglect to look at the consequences of all this, the unreality of it. They appear to forget that in today's world, internationalism is the only way forward. We're in the global village. We have to work together. We're all intertwined. We're all dependent on each other. We're interdependent. We cannot be separate. And there aren't a hundred different ways to be interdependent. When you live in Europe, you need to work with this huge thing called the European Union, where everything is regulated. We cannot step outside of that. It's just not possible. I'm sorry to have to say that some of the people at the head of this government and our opposition appear delusional. This country is divided and at war with itself. And what we need is a statesman or stateswoman-like person that can unite us, that can bring us together, that can understand the trouble we're in and that has a philosophical grasp of the situation, not a partisan one where it only deals with half of the population. We can't voluntarily strip ourselves of all our power and influence in the world. We're going to become a third country. We're going to become insignificant. We're going to become a rogue state. Many of us are aware of this. We have our eyes open. We feel a chronic pain and a dull existential despair about it all. And let's just remember that those who feel like this are in the majority now. Roughly a quarter of the people on this island voted to leave, but the other three quarters did not vote to leave, could not vote to leave, or decided to vote to remain. There are more than 45 million people in this land who did never vote for Brexit. And Many of us are increasingly exasperated. And things are not getting any better. More and more of us have lost confidence in this project and realize it is a form of insanity, a fantasy. It is literally not healthy for the country's well-being. 
as we watch our nurses and doctors vacating their post, leaving the UK because they feel in danger, we feel increasingly less easy ourselves. We're also vaguely aware that sometime next year, all of us stand to lose our EU citizens' rights, which we have come to value. There is a general sense of dreariness descending on the land. We are beginning to guess at how much we are discarding. We are beginning to see that it will not feel like victory, but more like defeat and self-injury. When reality starts to bite next year, the disapproval and protest in the country will find a whole new level of intensity. No more talk of remoners or complainers then. It will seem that those who did speak up were the heroes who should have been listened to. Well, there was still time to heed them. Let's listen to them now and let's not let this happen to the country. Gather your minds, think about the problems we are facing and get real about it all. It is time we save this nation.